Hello to all, my name is John Watts with Watts Digital Imaging in San Diego, California, and I'm a post-processing specialist for photographers. Amongst the vast majority of photographers, the two most popular programs used in selecting, culling, and identifying those awesome images deserving of a master file created in Photoshop are Lightroom and Bridge. When it comes to digital post-processing, I'm a huge advocate of the KISS method. Keep it super simple. Life is complicated enough, don't you think? So I use Bridge exclusively rather than Lightroom, mainly for its sheer simplicity. Even as a graphics professional, I don't need or want the organizational power of Lightroom, nor the complexity and learning curve that comes with it. For more information on the why, I've written a series of three blog posts discussing in depth the ongoing Photoshop versus Lightroom saga. At your convenience, and rather than repeat myself, start by checking out part one called Photoshop versus Lightroom, wrong question. So continuing on, if you're looking for simplicity in organizing and choosing those dynamic images destined for further work in Photoshop, then this video is for you. So what is Bridge? Adobe Bridge is a standalone program that's available with Photoshop Creative Cloud and other Adobe Creative Cloud programs. It allows you to organize, browse, locate, label, identify, choose, and call your image files. In keeping with the spirit of KISS, keep it super simple, I'm going to cover the most useful features to a photographer. Because Bridge is such a relatively simple program, it's quite possible that you'll be proficient with Bridge in about an hour after studying this video. So where do you find Bridge? As Bridge is a separate standalone program, you can open it without opening Photoshop, just like any normal program. I have an icon for it in my Mac OS dock, as you can see right here. But you can also open it from within Photoshop by going to the File menu, Browse and Bridge, like this. To open an image in Photoshop or the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, depending on the type of file it is, simply double click on the images icon, like this. Next up, let's explore some workspace and display options. By clicking on the workspace options buttons at the top, you can choose how you view, edit, and preview your images. The view shown is the Essentials view. Here's what the Filmstrip view looks like, and here's what the Metadata view looks like. All have their uses. You'll notice that each view has a different group of panels. Think of panels as miniature workspaces, each accomplishing a different function. There are about a dozen panels available, but I generally just use Favorites, Folders, Content, Filter, and Preview, at least in the Essentials view, as shown here. You can choose which panels you want visible in each workspace by going to the Window menu in Bridge. Those that are visible will have a check mark beside them. You can also resize the panels in each workspace. By dragging these vertical or horizontal dividers, you can change the view of the overall workspace. Now let's go a little more in-depth on some of these panels. The Content panel is where you view the content of your computer or folders. Right-click anywhere in the empty space of this panel to access the Sort submenu, like this. Here you can change the way Bridge sorts your images. As you can see, I have mine sorted in ascending order by file name. The Favorites and Folders panels are a great way to go straight to your favorite files and folders. The Preview panel shows a preview of the active image. By the way, if you choose more than one image to be active, more than one preview will show up. And the filter panel is handy if you want to show only those files that are labeled and filtered, which we'll talk about in a minute. Here are a few more useful features. The active image or images will be outlined in a different shade of gray than the other images, usually dark, and will be visible in the preview panel. These rotate image buttons give you the ability to rotate the active image 90 degrees either way, and you'll see the results in the preview panel. You can also see the full string of the file path of the active image. Over here is a trash image icon which will permanently trash the active images as you're editing. You can move this slider to change the thumbnail size in the content panel, like this. And here's a handy feature from the view menu. Press the spacebar on your keyboard to fill the active image on your screen. Click on your image and it zooms in. Press the spacebar again to exit. Okay, now let's talk about filter ratings and labels. As you're editing, filter ratings and labels give you a way to separate your good images from your great images. Use in conjunction with the filter panel, this is a big time saver. There are two methods that you can use to identify and separate your images. The first method is to rate with stars, and this is my favorite. You'll notice five stars underneath the active image. By clicking on these, you can add or subtract stars to rate the image. I'll give this one five. The second method is to rate with colored labels. 
By right mouse clicking on the active image and choosing label right down here, you can pick a specific color for the label. I'll choose yellow. By the way, going to the label menu in Bridge, you'll see various speed key combinations to organize your editing quickly. I use these all the time and they're really easy to learn, which speeds up the editing process. Now I can go to my filter panel and view only rated and label images in my content panel. For instance, if I only want to see five star images, I click and I only see the five star menus. I only want to see the red label, I click on the red label. And that's how and why I use Bridge to organize, browse, locate, label, rate, identify, choose, and call my images. Thanks for watching.